God is still on his throne, prayer changes everything, and praise can move mountains. This message is a response to a certain preacher making a statement regarding Jesus talking about hell. In that statement, he claims that Jesus never spoke about hell and that the only thing Jesus talked about was about going to heaven and loving everyone and that everyone has to be tolerated and accepted no matter what. Honestly, I don't know what Bible he's been reading, but in my Bible, Jesus is speaking quite a bit about hell and also who will go there. Matthew 10 verse 28, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Matthew 5.22 But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother shall be liable to the council. And whoever says you fool shall be liable to the hell of fire. Matthew 5.29 If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body be thrown into hell. If your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body go into hell. Matthew 18 verse 9 And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell fire. Matthew 23 verse 15 Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you traverse the sea and land to make a single convert. And when he becomes converted, you make him twice the child of hell that you are yourselves. Matthew 23, verse 33. You serpents, you brood of vipers, how are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Woe to you blind guides who say, if anyone swears by the temple, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound by his oath. You blind fools, for which is greater, the gold or the temple that has made the gold sacred? And you say, if anyone swears by the altar, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gift that is on the altar, he is bound by his oath. You blind men, for which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? So he who swears by the altar, swears by it, and by everything on it. And he who swears by heaven, swears by the throne of God, and by him who sits upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint and dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law justice and mercy and faith these you ought to have done without neglecting the others you blind guides straining out a net and swallowing a camel woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you cleanse the outside of the cup and of the plate that the outside may be clean woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites for you are like whitewashed tombs which outwardly appear beautiful but within they are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness so you also outwardly appear righteous to men but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity woe to you scribes and pharisees hypocrites For you build tombs of the prophets, and adorn the monuments of the righteous. 
saying, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding of blood of the prophets. Thus you witness against yourselves that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your fathers, you serpents, you brood of vipers. How are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Therefore I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of innocent Abel to the blood of Zechariah son of Barakiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I say to you, all this will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killing the prophets and stoning those who are sent to you, how often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken and desolate, for I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. In my Bible, each of these verses is all written in red letters. The red letters meaning those are the words, the direct words of Jesus Christ. Perhaps that preacher should go out and get himself a brand new red letter Bible. Moving on to 2 Peter 2 verses 1 through 22. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction, and many will follow their licentiousness, which is lawlessness, and because of them the way of truth will be reviled, and in their greed they will exploit you with false words, from of old their condemnation has not been idle, and their destruction has not been asleep. For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell, and committed them to the pits of nether gloom to be kept until the judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness, with seven other persons, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, if, by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, he condemned them to extinction, and made them an example to those who were to be ungodly. If he rescued righteous Lot, greatly distressed by the licentiousness of the wicked, for by what that righteous man saw and heard as he lived among them, he was vexed in his righteous soul day after day with their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial, and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, and especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passion and despise authority. Bold and willful, they are not afraid to revile the glorious ones, whereas angels, though greater in might and power, do not pronounce a reviling judgment upon them before the Lord. But these, like irrational animals, creatures of instinct, born to be caught and killed, reviling in manners of which they are ignorant, will be destroyed in the same destruction with them, suffering wrong for their wrongdoing. They counted pleasure to revel in the daytime. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their dissipation, carousing with you. They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sin. 
They entice unsteady souls. They have hearts trained in greed. Accursed children, forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Baor, who loved gain from wrongdoing, but was rebuked for his own transgression as a dumb ass spoke with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These are waterless springs in mists driven by the storm. For them the neither gloom of darkness has been reserved. For uttering loud boasts of folly, they entice with licentious passions of the flesh, who have barely escaped from those who live in error. They promised them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. For whatever overcomes a man, to that he is enslaved. For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world, through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overpowered, the last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness than after knowing it, to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. It has happened to them, according to the true proverb, that the dog turns back to his own vomit, and the sow is washed only to wallow in the mire. One might think this is talking about the unconverted, but sadly enough, the people being referred to here are the lukewarm or carnal-minded people who like to believe that they are Christians, when in fact they are nothing more than pharisaical hypocrites and legalists looking to earn their way into God's good graces by works, which is not possible. Ephesians 2 verses 7 through 12 talks more about this that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, meaning called an unbeliever by those who were supposedly believers, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at one time separated from Christ alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near in the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. Galatians 6 verse 15 For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Thank you so much for listening, and Lord bless.